Right, good morning. I'm going to go through some sampling with you. Uh, today, this is part of the market research, and it's to find out how you get opinions uh, about your particular product. So it's part of market research, because obviously you can't ask the entire population what you want to do. So generally what you'll do is you'll take a sample of people. So there are three different types I'm going to talk about today. Uh, the first one is going to be, there we go, sampling. Right, there you are. I'm going to talk about sampling relates to selecting people from the general population to conduct your market research. So if you look at the diagram of the picture there, it shows you, rather than asking the 12 people, what they've done is they've picked out four of the 12 in order for you to get an opinion, all right, or to get basically feedback on your product, could be what you want to do, what price it is, anything along those sorts of lines. All right, so the first one's completely random sampling. All right, so it's a sampling method uh, in which all members of a group, which is called the population, right, have an equal and independent chance uh, of being selected. So the way they used to do it was just go through a phone book or go through a directory or basically just go through a list of people and just pick names out at random. Not looking at particular market segments, not looking at ages, not looking at anything at all. You just get a list of names and you pick it from that. Another way of looking at it is kind of like a lottery. All right, so you'd put a select amount of balls in and you just... Pick them out, okay. So that the good things about it are there's no bias involved. So you're not saying, well, we want to ask these guys because you know how we are as human beings. We like people to tell us we're good, we're great, you know, and all these sorts of things. So we might pick, you know, if I wanted to know exactly how I looked on a particular Instagram or something like that, it could be, oh, I'll just ask my pals because they will be nice to me, right? In relation to random sampling, that's not the case. There is no bias of picking. You're just picking completely at random, eh, and that's at one, two, three could be fine, all right? Also saves time, because you just pick at random, just go down the list, you know, tick off how many people, right, to get yourself a sample. The bad things, though, are basically, if you think about it, it might not reflect your target market. So if you picked at random, you know, and at randomly you could pick, say, 10 women and two men, and you're selling a shaving product, okay? So that is not going to reflect your target market, because, like, for instance, you're not going to bring out the uh, Harry's, which are that new, which is the new shaving brand or something along those sorts of lines. Yeah, women do use uh, razors and all that sort of stuff, but it's not really their main target market is going to be looking at guys. But in the random sampling, if they just do it along those sorts of lines, it could well be that they've got more women than men in the sample. So it doesn't really reflect what your target market is. Right? And can also, there we're saying again, can over-represent a certain segment. So said there about the women. So really simple. Hey, random sampling, just go through. Pick it at random, no bias, saves time, right? But it might not reflect your target market. Second one is very wordy, and that puts a lot of people off, but it's more realistic. So a stratified random sampling. So a sample is selected that is representative of your target market. So, for instance, if 75% of the population for a product is male and they're working class, is between 16 to 25, then whatever sample you might be, you might need, right? 75% of that should be. A male should be 60 to 25 in working class. All right? So you get that, you bring that down. So if I had 12 people in my sample, which you wouldn't really take because that's a very small sample, so 120, for instance, could do that. Then three quarters of that, which is going by my terrible arithmetic, is about 80, right? Must be, you know, that's 16 to 25 working class. Okay, the good thing is that it does represent your target market, okay? It does re actually represent what it is you're looking for. So no research or bias as the sample is randomised, okay, from the list of those that meet the criteria. So what you do, first of all, is you get your list, 16 to 25 working class men, and then go in and random sample from that. Disadvantage is it takes time to work out through the population. Time is money, cost implications involved in that, and the sample could be geographically dispersed, okay, adding to the cost of the research. So, for instance, if you said, right, we've got these guys but they could be across the whole of Scotland, all right? So you could have somebody in Aberdeen, somebody in Inverness, somebody in Glasgow, somebody in the borders, right? and you'll have to send your researchers out to those particular areas. So there's cost implications in that again, all right? If you're doing it online or you're doing it basically over the telephone, then it could work quite well, but only if you're doing it, going out and asking the questions and doing straight up market research when you're going to get feedback, you're getting primary uh, research, primary data, which is what got for your specific purpose, then that eh, could be a cost implication, having to go and speak to everybody. And the third one is quota sampling, okay? So you basically choose from a group of people with certain characteristics, all right? So if, for instance, if you are selling over 50s life insurance, you're not going to be asking 25-year-olds. You're going to be asking 
over 50s. And if it's particularly if it's, if it's at males, what you'll do is you'll say, right, okay, so I need males over 50s. So you've got your, your population, as we classify it as, of your 50, you know, your, your over your males, you pick them out and then you go and ask them the questions. It's relatively easy to administer. Uh, it can be performed pretty quickly. Uh, it is cost effective uh, and accounts for population uh, proportions. So you know who you're going to ask, but you get a quota. So a quota basically just equates to the fact there's a certain amount. All right. It's not random. So that could be a bad thing. That's a disadvantage. All right. So some bias could start to be involved there. As it says there's a potential for selection bias which can result in it being unrepresentative of the population. So that's three three basically different areas of sampling. And sampling has been a tricky issue eh, over the years in higher business management. I think it mainly leads into the fact that a lot of business degrees do statistics at university, and sampling is one of the ways that they look at that. So that is sampling, very short video, uh, and I'll see you for the next.